Today I'm going to show you how to port your project over to BuildFire. Hey, hey. So let's start off with explaining uh, our simple project here. Now this is a very simple example, uh, but it should cover all the basics of how to port over your project. So what we have here is a list of names, a first name, last name, and telephone number put into a table pulled from some database. Now let's take a look at our code. It's a simple HTML page that utilizes jQuery pulled from some outside source uh, as well as Bootstrap uh, for styling. Now the trick with Bootstrap is, is we recommend that you use Bootstrap for your styling in your project so that you can inherit the app theme. So whenever this ports over to the application, if the app owner changes his theme from a red theme to a blue theme, it'll automatically inherit if you use Bootstrap. Now, if your project doesn't need to be themed and it needs to be static in its theme, uh, you don't need to worry about that. So uh, now that, let's take a look at the body. We have a simple table here using, again, Bootstrap theming. Uh, first name, last name, title, which is the header up here, and then an empty body that will be injected dynamically. Now, going down to the JavaScript side, we have load users. It's a function here that takes a page size, calls some API from, in this case, PhilText. Thank you, PhilText, for the API. Uh, and it gives it a page size, and right here we have it hard-coded to 5. And once it comes back, it uses jQuery to inject table rows uh, into our table, thus giving us this result. So let's port this over to a BuildFire plugin. So let's take a look at our project here. So I have two tabs open. I have the BuildFire SDK tab and I have the example project tab. Now this only has the index.html as you see right here. And what we want to do is we want to port it over into a plugin. So if I open up uh, SDK and I go into plugins, I see a list of example plugins in my plugin, which is the, the template, if you will, of Hello World. So if I, let's, let's make a copy of this. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and just paste it in here. And then let's rename this to uh, example project plugin. Now, what we see here is something that we want to show on the widget side, actually that what shows up on the phone. So if we come in here and uh, let's just copy this file over. So I'm going to copy what I want on the phone side. So let's go and hit copy and come back here to the widget and paste it in here. Now it's going to ask me to uh, override it since it's the same name. I'm going to say go ahead and replace that one. Okay, now in the control we have the content design settings. Nothing that we've done so far really needs to be overridden in here. Uh, and the widget, uh, which is what we want on the phone, uh, we've overridden here. So let's take a look at that and see where we're at. So let's go over here and go file. Let's open up a project. So my SDK is available under dev. SDK. Let's open it. So in the plugins folder within the SDK, we should be able to see example project plugin. And in here, we're able to see our example code. So let's just give it a quick test run and uh, see what, what comes up. So we go into plugin tester and run this. So we want to type in example project plugin and now it loads our uh, example right in here. So that is the basic fundamental parts of what we have uh, but what we want to be able to do is actually um, make, for example, this, this responsive to the back button, uh, make sure it uses resources that are local to the device and not going online to pick it up, uh, as well as uh, making maybe the page size configurable. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So going back to our project, let's see what kind of modifications we want to do. Now, when referencing JavaScript files or any other resources that's foreign, that's going to 
um, the internet and not to your local files and picking them up. That still works. However, it doesn't perform well and it doesn't perform offline. So what you want to be able to do is uh, anytime you have a resource that is needed, uh, see one if we provide it for you. So if you go into the root scripts folder, you'll find that we provide jQuery for you here. So what we can do here is just change this jQuery uh, reference to point to the local one. Uh, and all we have to do is just go up the tree relatively. So uh, I'm right now within widget, so let me close this out so it's clear. So I'm within widget here. I need to go up one step, two steps, three steps, and then scripts. So what I'm gonna do is one, two, three, scripts, slash, jQuery, slash, jQuery mix. Okay, so now this doesn't need to go to the internet when it's on the phone to pick up jQuery. It has it locally. Now, when it comes down to Bootstrap CSS, this is automatically added in whenever you reference BuildFire.js. It automatically ports that over for you. So what we want to do here is add another reference in the very beginning, which is mandatory for uh, plugins to be able to function. So to just port over... Build Fire JS, and again, that's located right here. This is what allows us to um, interact with the back button on the phone or be able to um, interact with the device features. Uh, so this is very important that we add this in. So after that, let's go ahead and take a look at um, what our project looks like. Let's refresh. And now we notice that the styling has changed a little bit because now it's inheriting from a, a modified bootstrap that has a different theme, but it continues to work. jQuery continues to work because obviously this piece works. Okay, so for the widget side, that's the first portion of porting it over. The second part that we want to do is maybe give some, some uh, uh, settings that the app owner can influence how the widget looks. So for example, he says, okay, five is fine, but I may want it maybe to go to 10, 10 looks better. Okay, so instead of hard coding the five count down here, we want to be able to allow the app owner to modify this. So how do we do that? So what we wanna do here is go into the control section. Now remember, everything in this section here is under the control. So control has content, design, and settings. So we want to go to the content section. And as we can see, it automatically adds in BuildFire.js. If we copied it from my plugin, it adds that in for you. It gives you some remarked out uh, Angular, Bootstrap, uh, JS, uh, and jQuery libraries if you want to use those. It just gives you the, the path quickly for you. But all we want to do is Let's do something extremely simple. And on click, go do something. Let's call it save. Okay. So down here, let's add a new script. Now, one thing to note about scripts, I'm doing everything um, basically in line, but if you were to separate this out in JavaScript files, um, make sure that the control section and the widget section keep their files independent of each other. Why is that? What goes to the phone is only the widget. The control section doesn't go to the phone. So if you have something either above on the root uh, uh, as shared resources or the widget is going into the control to look at a particular JavaScript file, image, CSS file, whatever it may be, it won't be available to you on the phone. That's a very important point. So keep the files separated because they go, one goes to the web and the other one goes to the phone. So it's very important to keep them separate. So let's come back here and put, just like jQuery, you automatically have a dollar sign when you add buildfire.js, it automatically puts in buildfire for you. And what we want to do is access the data store, which is basically the uh, service that allows us to read and write on the control side and read on the widget side. And what we want to do is save. 
Now it takes an object. So the object that we want to save is, let's call it row count here. And what we want to put in row count uh, is, okay. And then over here you get a function that has um, error or result. So if there's an error, there'll be an error, and if it saves, it'll give you back the ID of that document once it's saved. We really don't need to do much except save this. Now the next bit that we want to do here is load the previously saved value the first time this page loads. So same thing, buildfire.datastore.get this time. And the get is and say equals result dot data dot row count. Okay. One last bit is we need to actually take this out of the save function. Sorry about that. And now it'll run automatically right when the page starts and not when you click save, which is the correct. So let's add in 10. Refresh. We get 10. Okay, so now that it's saved here, we want to make sure that it actually gets pulled up here and used to, change, to influence the number of rows here from 5 to 10. So let's move over to the widget side. On the widget side, we can see it's hard-coded here to five. So let's go ahead and change that. So all we need to do is buildfire.datastore.get, just like we did when we first pulled it up here. Uh, the only difference is instead of displaying it, we're actually going to use that value. Uh, so once we do get here, let's do a function as the callback, error and result. Now remember, the widget side is read-only. Uh, you need user data to be able to write data uh, from the app side. So what we want to do here is instead of five, we want result.data.rowCount. That comes back. So let's give that a shot. Let's refresh here. And notice now that it's 10. Okay. If we go back here and make it two, oop, not 92, let's make it two, save, and then reload this, you'll see that it's two. But having to reload every time is, is a little bit annoying. Uh, you wanna be able to change here, hit save, and automatically see the change here. So what we wanna do on the widget side is add another bit here. So buildfire.datastore.onUpdate. Okay, that's uh, the, the, the trigger that occurs whenever there's a save on the data store. The widget is automatically notified about that. So uh, right here, there's a callback function. And there is no error here because obviously it's saved. So we just get back the result. And we just want to do the exact same thing. So let's give that a shot. So let's refresh what we have here and then say, okay, here's five, save. Notice that it, it loaded five. Now we do 10 here. So uh, what we wanna do is actually clear it out every time. Uh, so what we wanna do here is on load users, what we'll do here on the very top is get dollar sign, And what we want to do is grab the records dot empty. And let's take a look at what happens here. So let's refresh. And you see that you have 10 here. And if we come back and say two, save, it refreshes. So there you go. We've taken a project, uh, ported it over into a plugin, hooked it up to BuildFire.js, and now made it configurable. I hope this helps.